talk, I play it like I say it. One more time. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wizzo Talk. Why Wizzo Talk? Because I want to know, don't you? Here at Wizzo Talk, I play it like you say it, uncut and unedited. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all the hot topics yet to come. Like to be a guest on the show? Hit me up in the comments. Have a hot topic you'd like to hear discussed on Wizzo Talk? Hit me up in the comments. Today we're going to be talking about why aren't more black fathers involved in their kids' lives? We're going to meet our guests, and then we're going to chop it up and get this thing going. Hello, everyone. I'm Brandy. Nice to meet you. Hello, everyone. I'm Joshua, a.k.a. Seven Points of Bliss. Hope you all having a great day. Hello, everyone. I'm Little Jack. All right, all right, all right. Just a quick thing before I read one of my little uh, footnotes of our research. I want to thank everyone for coming on out. I really appreciate the love and support. Yes, Brandon, she's been my guest for the second time, and I count it. She's one of my go-to. I really appreciate you because it's so hard to get females on the show, so I really appreciate you for that. Thank you, know. you so much. Yes, Josh, second time with me, third time and counting. So really appreciate you showing the love and support. My man, Big Jack, come all the way from Dallas to support me. That's nothing but love right there. I appreciate that. Drove down. Got a bum foot, but he let that stop him. He like, Wizzo, I'm going to be there. So I appreciate the love and support from all you guys. Most definitely. Look forward to being on. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to read off one of my little searches because I always do a little search. We're going to get it started, and then we're going to chop it up to find out why aren't more black fathers involved in their kids' life. I have my glasses on today, so I can kind of <laughs> read my writing Good a job. little bit. So here we go. So black men in the United States have long been subject to system. Systematic, I gotta get that out of there. I had trouble with that already. Systematic racism and discrimination, which can impact their ability to be involved in their kids' lives. Things included, well, sorry about that, back up. This is uh, uncut, so I'm just gonna roll with this shit. This can include being unfairly targeted by law enforcement, facing high rates of unemployment and poverty, and being subject to harsher sentencing in the criminal justice system. And I'm sure we can relate to all of that because all that about you. Mm -hmm. So anybody have any thoughts to get this thing jumping on why aren't more black fathers involved in their kids' lives? Um, it don't matter. Go ahead, Brandon. You got something? Well, I guess for me, um, are we here, are we discussing this from um, a traumatic viewpoint, from the relationship there's so many different mm -hmm. different avenues that you can take this, you exactly. know. Um, so I guess that's where, before we start, like, where are we coming from? Where are we right. coming from? That's, that's, that's a good question. And I know where we're going, and we're going to cover all that we can within exactly. this hour and a half. So there's no hose barred. Just drop it like it's hot or cold, and let's roll with it. Because we also know that it also can be where – the mother don't want the father involved in it because maybe he cheated, maybe he done whatever, whatever. But is that a right to take him out of the kid's life? So we can just go wherever we want to go with it. Let's chop it up and let's let the world know what we're thinking about it. Let's, let's go. go. Gentlemen. All right. Um, honestly, uh, one of the things I think that it starts with is um, the perspective of not allowing little boys to be in tune with their feelings. I feel like um, little girls are taught from a very young age to know how to care for a, a baby and stuff like that. And when it comes to our little boys, we don't let them play with like baby dolls and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So as to where when they grow up, they don't have that same respect for nurturing life. You know what I mean? It's right. as to where girls are just, it's pushed on them s from birth, like get a baby doll or have Barbies and stuff like that. And little boys have like action figures and little boys aren't really push to be in tune with their emotions mm -hmm. as much either. So I feel like there's a, a genuine disconnect on that level. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Anybody comments on that? Yeah. Well, I can I can see that viewpoint because, so for me, that, that just speaks when you get older. It's easier to not be there mm. because you don't have that, that connection. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whereas with, with women, if you have a child and you know for whatever reason they're taken out of the picture the one thing you're doing is trying to give back to that mm -hmm. child because you have that connection mm -hmm. you know 
Um, so I can I can totally understand where he's coming from and where that came from. Um, for me, when I think of this topic, um, I'm from a single parent home. So I was um, my dad wasn't there. Um, my mom was there for forty six years. So I spent a lot of my life um, in a single parent home with my mom and my dad. So for me, it it's more of a, what is the relationship like between the two adults that mm-hmm. have this child, okay? Because that that says, that will say a lot as to, you know, whether or not he's going to be the mm-hmm. best for best for me. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, right along with what he was saying, it's, it's, it's truth to it, but you got to also recognize that you Women are nurturers, you know, natural. Mm-hmm. That's they, they they give life. So uh, I think part of another component of this is men understanding their role. Mm-hmm. Uh, that you you provide, you protect, and when we stop doing that, that that makes a woman. You know, it's it's, it's like it's a lot of faults in there. It's right, really right. no mm-hmm. one. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's no yeah. one. It's not just a woman. It's not just a man. It's right. a it's a multitude. It's a system, like right. like you mm-hmm. right. said. Right. So it's a lot of factors in this, and one of the things that we as the men and the women of parents that you know so on, we got to take control of that. Mm-hmm. You that's know, right. um, uh, so that's that's how I feel about right. it. You right. know, it's right. it's it's so many um, so many elements to it that make this work. Right. Right. So let me just ask, and maybe uh, Brandon can kind of maybe jump on this. But first, before I go there, I have to say that I cannot relate to this topic. I just this was something I just kind of want to just bring out. Mm-hmm. Feel that something need to be discussed. Uh, me as for myself, I've always been without a doubt a hundred percent involved in my kids' life, uh, or except for uh, I worked as a contractor two and a half years in Iraq. And right. when I came back, they know if they look up in them stands, whether it's track or football, they're going to see their daddy up there in them stands. Mm-hmm. And I have the video footage to prove mm-hmm. it for you to believe that. And my mom, even though my dad was lived in Temple and my mom, but I was raised by my mom about 98% of the time, even though my dad is there. And he had another family, other kids, but he was still, he wasn't always into the life as like I am with my kids. My son's in Ohio coaching football. I talk to him almost every day. My daughter, my oldest son, we have a bond, and I want to make sure that I would be there because I believe in, like, breaking the cycle, especially, like, when uh, black people are scared to swim. You know, I talk, I want to make sure my kids know how to swim. You know, how sometimes blacks can be late for this and be late for that. No, I'm going to be on time. I'm going to be early because every second of my time is valuable. So I'm going to be there, you know. So I, I can't really relate to that topic that much, but I, I want to have a discussion, come in and get some different points of views and just talk it up and let the world know what's going on. And so I would say this um, maybe from a woman's point of view. So you're dating a guy, you have a kid, and the kid is, the daddy is caught cheating or whatever. You wind up, you split up, you break up. Do you not let him back in that kid's life? Because we know this is happening right today. So do you, because you mad because he cheated or whatever, or done whatever he done, do you not let him back in that kid's life? Or is it right to not let him back in that kid's life? Coming from a woman's point of view, and then the guys, we can chop in on that too. Okay, so I'm a different kind of baby mama. Okay, I'll right, say, and that's good. Kind yeah. of they say. Right. Um, but for me, it, again, it goes back to communication. Right. Okay. Um, in any relationship that I have, um, I am a single dad, so I know about right. that. Right. Okay. Um, however, we have split and divorced. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and with that, like we can still have conversation. Mm-hmm. You know. So that says, okay, hey, you know, we have to communicate for our, for our child. I don't have to like you, right. you know, but I do have to interact with you, and I have to find a way to interact with you that's positive for our kids. Right. And a lot of times, women are scorned because the relationship is going to 
like you said, you know, they were cheated on or whatever. So they have no closure. Mm -hmm. So how how dare you feel like you can treat this young person Mm -hmm. better than you treated me? Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, So and for women, you have to you gotta take that into consideration too because the child didn't ask for the divorce. Um, this guy say, yeah, I want to get out of here. And so now here's this beautiful little person that she has to, she has to deal with this. You know what I mean? Um, with my children, uh, my youngest two children, their dad didn't make it back into the picture until they were about nine and ten years old. And he was, he was, he would call, you know what I'm saying? Um, and he was like, well, are you going to send my kids to the foster home? And I said, no, I'm not doing that. Right, like, right. Yeah. You just told me that you met another young lady and mm-hmm. you were just with another young lady. And right. Now y'all right. having conflict between each other. So I don't feel comfortable sending my kids to the foster home. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, but be 100, though. Would you ever really, really feel comfortable? I would. Okay, because at ten, after they, after he had presented himself back into the picture, um, I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it a try, mm-hmm. and so I let him go. And his daughter came to me, and I was like, everything in me was like, this is why I didn't tell her when she was younger. Mm-hmm. Okay, now she has the ability to speak up for herself. Mm-hmm call and say, Mom, I'm not comfortable. But at one and two, she had to. She didn't she have that ability. That. You know? So at one and two, if he was on the straight and narrow and doing what he was supposed to be doing, I would have got on a plane, dropped them off, went and did the mommy thing, right. pick them back up a week later, and come back to Colleen. You see what I'm saying? So but that's just me. Because I understand, you know what? You weren't good for me, but you might be good for somebody else. Mm-hmm. But we still got to work. Mm-hmm. So just to add one other thing to that, so uh, some guys use the thing, well, shit, I'm paying child support. I can do whatever. I can whatever, whatever. Because I'm paying child support. That's my baby. That's my baby, whatever. Mm-hmm. So he's paying child support, and he's coming regular. We'll just say that it's coming regular, the child support is. And so does the mom really have the right to say, I'm not sending my baby up there to you, to wherever he's at, even though what you're not stable, you're not this or not what, but the support is steady coming. Mm-hmm. But so do I not send, that? that is partly his child also. Mm-hmm. So I, I would say on that, she she do have the right, if it's valid that, like you said, you got a valid reason, that's just like if the man had the child okay. and the mother mm-hmm. wanted. If she got different dudes, right. I don't want different dudes around my daughter. Right. right. I got two daughters, I got two sons. Mm-hmm. I you know, same thing I want for my sons, I want for my daughters. Right, right. I don't I don't tell my sons, hey, go out there and try to populate the world right. with as many people as you can mm-hmm. because okay. you gotta watch who you mix your DNA with. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's what a lot of men and women we gotta work on because we'll go out and we'll let one night ruin our whole life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So you end up laying with somebody that like you said, you he, he, he can't trust him. Right. No matter where he at in life or she at or whoever it is. So that's, that's one of the things that we got to own up to mm-hmm. both sides is, you know, you all watch who you mixing your DNA with, right. you know. Okay, so in other words, then, just because he is paying child support, don't give him full right to see his child whenever he wants to if he's not on the up and up or so to speak or have things going right uh, or don't have his life together, but he's paying support. So yeah. In that yeah. aspect, you have to look at what's best for the child, mm-hmm. you know, and and – I feel like it always comes back to what's best for the child. Correct. Yes, I'm sending my money every month, mm-hmm. okay, like clockwork, sending my money every month. However, I'm in questionable situations, you know, and as the custodial parent, as usually the mother is the custodial parent, mm-hmm. um, if emotion is taken off of the table, okay, because a lot of times that's where that's where – I'm not sending my kid down. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, if right. emotion is taken off of the table and just looked at straight facts, that's it. Then 
you have a conversation with that man, and this is why I'm uncomfortable with you having your kid with me. And you have a conversation. It ain't got nothing to do with how I feel about you. It ain't got nothing to do with who you with. Like, as a man. That's, that's like, man, that's, that's the million dollar question right there. And that emotion, you got to understand that we, as men, we dealing with, I call women emotional creatures. Everybody calls women emotional creatures. And I'm not going to say that women are not emotional creatures. Y'all are up and down, up and down. Uh And I'm I'm not saying that's that's, that's not bad or that's good. I'm just saying you're dealing with what it is. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be hard because you, let's say he wasn't cheating. You you know, y'all split it. But then he get out there and he decides he wants to, you know, hey, man, what I thought I wanted, I want you. I want my kid. Right. You know, and then you like, nah, dude, you you, you you walked away too easy. You let it go too easy. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm in a place. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of things that, you know, the emotions is, is hard. Dealing with emotions is the number one reason why we can't get processed. Because mm-hmm. we, we, we're not taught to deal with emotions. So, so that's that's a that's a tough one. Yeah. We we can say it all day long, but even as a man, we have emotions about things because we don't never get to talk <coughs> about our emotions. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. we, don't, we don't we don't we don't get to talk about mm-hmm. ours. We just keep them bottled up, and then when you say something, I say something. Then now I'm gonna blast you. Mm-hmm. You know, I I was a sailor, so mm-hmm. I, I I have no problem cussing like a sailor. <laughs> you know, people laugh at me all the time. Right. I'm the person in the family that I say what everybody else really want to right. say. Right. You right. know, I say it, you know, and right. that's where it lands, you know. Right. But, you know, I, I dig what you're saying, though, but, you know, that, that emotions are tough. Emotional awareness and emotional maturity is definitely one of the major problems when it comes to, you know what I'm saying, dealing with somebody that you have a, a child with because a lot of times they can't move past things and they can't accept growth. Like one person will grow and the other person will be stuck in that mode and it's very hard to deal with that because sometimes people can't accept that you've changed and you've grown mm-hmm. from the point that you are. Mm-hmm. Yep, or don't want to let you exactly. move yeah, on. They exactly. want to hold you back with them. Mm-hmm. You know, you used to do this. Mm-hmm. You know, Do we think that, uh, like I read it earlier in, in Oakland, uh, the the, the jail time and the, oh. the uh, 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 unemployment and stuff like that. Let's say one of the dead's in jail. The woman may say, I don't want my baby to see that. Mm. You know, I don't want him to see him like that or whatever, or something like that. You know, is that is that right? I mean, maybe he was just caught up to where he was falsely whatever, or maybe mm-hmm. what? I don't know. I'm just kind of putting it out there. So if he's in there locked up, does he not get a chance to see his kid? And I work in the prison system. I'm going to tell you, that was hard for me watching other people. Mm-hmm. That, that I can't really tell you that uh, or or against it. Right. it. It comes to the individual. Mm-hmm. And a lot of men, uh, guys, yeah. bring me my kids. But right. a lot of men that I knew that was locked up, they bring my baby home and see my page mm-hmm. like family. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the man side of of us, but a lot of the guys, yeah, bring my baby, you know, and uh, you know, so it's no right or wrong. I feel Mm. to that question, you know, and that, like you said, go back to the communication between the two, Mm -hmm. you know, and and it's if the woman is saying no, I don't want him, he wants to, then you, you know, where you at? You got to work it out. Maybe maybe wait till the the kid get a little older. Maybe you talk to them a, a telephone visit or something mm-hmm. instead of a contact, you know, visit or something like that. But right. seeing him locked up and behind the window and on the phone like that, right. you know. Uh, right. And you see, know. In, in that aspect, um, the f- I can understand the physical mm-hmm. aspect, but there is no reason why the mothers have to now they have yeah there's there's no reason why that level of communication can't happen you see what i'm saying because they still have the opportunity to foster a relationship whereas if you you know way way back in the day you know boots on the ground go to jail right Mm -hmm. um but now that they don't have that now that that's not the only mode anymore 
can't say no sometimes. Why would you say no sometimes? Mm-hmm. I mean, depending on what, for whatever reason, mm-hmm. he's there for, that's between them. But why can't you talk to your dad, foster a parent or a, a relationship with them? Mm-hmm. I don't think a child should be kept from their parents. Mm-hmm. So on top of what you were saying about incarceration, also you got to look at even once they get out and did their time, right. lack of access. Mm-hmm. You, know what I mean? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, the resources are not there. Yeah. And mm-hmm. even before you get incarcerated, how much knowledge are you with? Yeah. Or the opportunities are, mm-hmm. are, are, people say given, it's not a such thing as given because you're going to have to work for everything. Right, right. You know, even, you know, when we say given, people look at given, you still got to give a person an opportunity. Mm-hmm. You don't have right. to get, giving money and giving opportunity are two different things. Yeah. You know, I just want to know, we all sit down and apply for the job, and they actually pick the best candidate for the job. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. pick because I'm a guy, and, and not pick you, you the best candidate for the job, mm-hmm. or because I'm, I'm, I'm look like, I'm, a, I'm me and him look like we're going to start some stuff we go right. over on the job. Mm-hmm. Right. We're going to take right. Paul, because Paul yeah. look cool, you know. Right. So, you know, yeah. when you, you know, when you going through this, you know, when I was a manager at Home Depot, I hired and fired a lot of people, but yeah. I hired a lot of people that looked like us, and I hired a lot of people that didn't. Right. And one thing I noticed is everybody, if you were smart, people don't realize that you can go on the website and pull up any jobs interview questions mm-hmm. that they're going to ask you. Right. Mm-hmm. And you can study them. So that's why I never asked you interview questions. Right, right. So I would take your resume. Right. Everybody turns in a resume. Eighty percent of the people that turned in a resume didn't know their resume, mm. and, and I sit there. Go I'm talking about. I had college. Yeah. I had college students. I had all kind of people. Right. Graduates. Everybody didn't know what their resume was. I'm yeah. sitting there looking at the resume, and I asked them all. Well, so you, you lived worked all this, right? Right? you know, you <laughs> list all this, yeah. Yeah. So you and you don't right. even know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so so I say, you know, access is man, access and the, the knowledge of and lack mm-hmm. of is is a is a real key. That's why we, you know, we are identified that mm-hmm. a lot of this stuff is is so many sections and parts right. to it. Right, right. You know, yeah. and and yeah. we kind of you know hit on the incarceration and the mm-hmm. you know a man and a woman you know right. working mm-hmm. out yeah. the communication side. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, but it, it's so much, man. It, mm-hmm. it goes deeper than a lot of people realize. Understand that and see that now. Now, with this day and time, it seemed like the uh, um, the, right, the resources should be there now. I mean, mm-hmm. as opposed to they were ten or twenty years ago. Mm-hmm. But you also, and I'm sure we can kind of relate. The man is just so manly. I'm not reaching out to that. I don't, don't want to talk to no damn counselor. Mm-hmm. I don't want to talk to this or whatever. Even though that that may be something that help you and bring you back in your child's life. Mm-hmm. But because I'm a man. A black man, she can't tell me nothing. That white woman can't tell me nothing. Or that counselor can't tell me nothing. And so, so you know. That's why it's important for somebody that look like us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because when you, when you, same way with our kids. Right. You know, man, this, this stuff with the kids, though, and the pops and the family, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's tough. Yeah. But when you see somebody look like you, <clears throat> me, I'm, I'm tempted to. You know, be more mindful. Yeah. Right. But and it's relate. a lot yeah. of people that see us. I, I hear people, mm-hmm. and that, that dude don't, they don't, know, they don't know what the hell they doing. Right. He look like me. Yeah. But we have let white America tell us all our life what we what we should do mm-hmm. and what we should be. Right, right, right. When you already know, your grandparents told you what you should be. Yeah. Right. You know. Right. Right. So, you know, we just got to get back to doing what. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say another part to that. Why the what happened to us is mm-hmm. we forgot about taking care of the kids and the elderly. Mm-hmm. And if you remember, yeah. Yeah. if you remember when we was growing up, we held the door. Yeah. We, you know, we helped we helped people get their groceries in the house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You wasn't walking up and down the east side, right. nowhere in Temple, right. and you ain't helped no elderly. You, yep. you wasn't Little doing kids that. Run up. Yeah. You, you know, need some help. You know, you right. need some help. You know, no, nah, I got it. Now nah, let me get it for you. Right. You know, right. now, shh, 
man, them doors, if, if you don't put the automatic doors in, the old people yeah. get ran over yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. It, yeah. I can relate that. As <clears throat> I was my kids, and I've taught my kids, my daughter knows that if she and her brother knows that if she's going through that door, she's going to stop. Mm-hmm. And she going to wait for him to open that door or me or whatever. Because that's the way I brought up and I made sure that her man, this is how, you know, when you get mm-hmm. with somebody, this is what he's going to do. That door pulls to the left. She already knows she's going to be on this side for him to open that door to come up yeah. and let her come in or whatever, you know. And and, yeah. and I say this, young women and women, period, mm-hmm. you, you the women are the ones that the men actually follow. Yeah. Because I. No, no harm taken, but you know we've been giving you a little stuff about you know. So the women actually, <laughs> the women actually yeah. set the precedent. Right. So that's yeah. why a lot of times I say it's on the woman because right. we come from a woman. Right. Mm-hmm. A woman made us. Yeah. Right. You know. So when I when I had problems, you know, I went to my mom. And right. I, my dad wasn't in my life. Right. You know, but I couldn't not say I'm gonna be just like him because. Mm-hmm. Just because he wasn't there, that don't mean I, I don't need to be there. Right. And and if you make every effort to be in your child life, I mean, I was in the house, but like you said, yeah. your dad was there, but mm-hmm. through working. Right. See, back, you know, I had to work two full-time <coughs> jobs to take care of a household of uh, right. uh, three kids. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And and be able to do all I wanted to do, right. you know. Yeah. Uh, so at the end of the day, it kind of took me out the house because when you're doing 80 hours a week, 80 to 100 a week for yeah. corporate, inf- you know, as a manager at, yeah. at a corporation, yeah. you're taking from your kids, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. And so, you know, we got to get back to that balance. We got to right. get back to putting the, putting the kids first and the elderly. Right. Because one day we all won't be elderly. Yeah. We all came in as kids, yeah. you know. And so what if our parents did with the amount of resources that's here today did to us right. – what the parents that has the resource. Like you said, a man don't want to sit down to, with a counselor. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big fan of a counselor, but mm-hmm. if if I'm at the point of my life that I need to change, right. yeah. and we all got to have, we, I can't let you be the person that's, that's uh, more uh, hard on me than I'm on myself. Right. Correct. My Correct. expectation needs to be higher than anybody. Right. You know, and when we start doing that, holding ourselves accountable, right. you know, and that, that's a hard thing to do too, but that's mm-hmm. something that we all need to work on. You know, it's holding ourselves accountable because when your kids see that, your kid don't think, walk around and think that, you know, it's his or her, you know, right. what don't stink. Right. Mm-hmm. right. You know, right. and so a lot of kids <coughs> is arrogant, disrespectful, mm-hmm. you know, and, and we, we got we to gotta work on them kids, but we got to right. also work on the parents that's parenting them kids, right. those right. kids. So at the end of the day, I just, you know, say my, my life wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. But that don't mean just because my life wasn't, you know, mom and pop right there. Right white picket fence that mm-hmm. I can't create that, that for them, right. you know, so that's more the reason you should want to do it, right. you know, right. uh, you say breaking cycles, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's, that's a big one, you know, mm-hmm. hey, how many, how many kids you want your, you got five kids, but you got five different, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. you know, mamas or daddies, you know, it, it ain't just the women having different mm-hmm. baby daddies, the yeah. women got, the men got to be different baby moms. Right. right there okay. with it always is how many how many baby daddies you got? Mm-hmm. Well, how many women have you slept with right, and right. made kids with? Right, you know, right. yeah. you you do not your harem yeah. that you are creating does not you know take care of those kids. Mm-hmm. Don't don't try to give me a a, a red mark right. because and you are in the same. Does it matter? Okay. It doesn't. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. okay? However, but, yeah. that's what you know when you when you say you know how many people have you made kids with mm-hmm. or or procreated with? It's looked down when a woman has five kids by five different men, mm-hmm. but for a man to have five kids by oh, five yeah. different women, right. it's like oh okay. Yeah. You, What's the you know difference? Why? You know why it's What's the difference? difference? Because we know y'all love. When it, when y'all lay down, most women, when y'all lay down with a man, mm-hmm. y'all love that man. Mm-hmm. Most men, we ain't in love with that woman we lay down with. Mm. Right. That's, that's the real difference. Right. We're not, we're not going there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. We, we're not, we're not going to go there because, okay, and 
and just had this conversation while I'm working on the material. Okay. Um, for one, one of the things that I say is if a woman's emotions are not attached to her vagina, then that was the intention. Okay? And yes, you say emotions are a really big thing, and I get it. I, I get it. Okay? However, if a woman's emotions are not attached to her vagina, she can go and sleep with whoever she wants to, and that man is going to be like, oh, no, you got, you don't feel me like that? Mm. Because I'll call you tomorrow or maybe the next day. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I know some women I know some women that do think like that and operate like that. Mm -hmm. I do, too, actually. Yes. I, 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 know, I know quite a few women that really, they that are not emotionally attached. And, you know, if <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, do we, what do we say about those women? Right. You know. Right. I mean, you, you, you. I mean. I think so, they're amazing. Uh, back to FYI. what you said. But back to um, what you said about the um, man doing it, and the and the woman, you know, asking. So when it comes to uh, men and women having uh, making the decisions about each other, mm -hmm. okay. When you, if you looking for a mate, or a significant other, or if you just looking for somebody that I'm just kicking with, we ain't, you know, we ain't trying to be serious. We just kicking with, right? Right. You know, right. You know uh, what are the, I guess the things that you want to see for for yourself? Well, as we are veering off topic here. Yeah, we're um, going with it. We 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 so many, it's so we many. Some wild but as, as we, as we are, are veering off topic here, like, if it is just, you know, we in, a, we in the moment and I'm in my single time period, you know, it could just be physical aesthetic, all right? If I know that, hey, this ain't going no further than today or tomorrow, you know, what does he look like on the outside? Okay? Mm -hmm. How do I picture myself with this person on the outside who I could, you know, bring out on a date or whatever be the case? Okay? If it has the ability to be more than that, mm -hmm. okay, so into I need you to match me intellectually. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not saying that you have to have a degree or anything like that, right. but can you hold a conversation? Right. Okay? And is that conversation beyond just the face value, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and then if you are, if we gonna make this happen and you know, like now we're talking about finances, now right, we're talking right. about you know, longevity and things like that, then I need to know where you're at mentally. Mm -hmm. Are you still attached to whatever relationship you had in the past? Have you dealt with that? Have you moved on from that? Mm -hmm. Like, where are you at? Uh, you know, because you want the same thing from me. Mm -hmm. You want me to be emotionally available to you. However, are you emotional? Are you uh, able to reciprocate that? Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. And a lot of times we don't, we as women don't look at that, and it's just like, ooh, he's the next hottest thing. But that hottest thing, you know, you mm -hmm. that one night, Okay, right. that one like night we done mixed DNA, yeah, yeah, right. and now we got this, and now you're like, oh, my God, mm -hmm. right. I have to deal with this person, and I don't even like this person. No, I don't not. like you. Yeah. Like, you're not a good person, but now I have to deal with you, okay? Because we have this kid. Because we have, because we have this kid, and, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. where the communication thing comes in, and, like, in working in, in the – in the school system, I have some students who now have kids, mm -hmm. and like the the young men, they're like, "Oh, I can't stand my baby mama." Well, mm -hmm. you went down this hole. You mm -hmm. chose her, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Whether you chose her for one night or y'all were together for three years, you chose mm -hmm. this person, mm -hmm. and y'all did what y'all did. Mm -hmm. So now you have to figure out how to interact and be there, you know. Y'all don't have to go as a 
operate as a family unit right. unless mm-hmm. that is what you agree to do. Mm-hmm. But you do have to figure out, okay, so are we having two birthdays this year or one? Okay. And if we having one birthday, am I footing a bill? Are you footing a bill? But then you well, have so to I just do it together. Right. But then you have to you have to be able to talk about finances. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yep. You have to be able to say, you know what, I ain't got it all. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Man or woman. And yeah. you're right, man or woman. Yeah. And as a as a man, like for you to say you have to feel comfortable to say I ain't got it and not not be mad. It was very you know, hard. You know, yeah, you as a okay. man, you, you, it's like you demeaning your own self. Right, yeah. but if, however, if that person that you laid down and y'all had this child with, if y'all had the ability to communicate, mm-hmm. because to me it all goes back to communication. Okay, like I have, how many kids I got? Just one. Oh, oh Lord. Lord. <laughs> no, no, you did not do that. No, 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 you did not do that. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, actually, I have five kids. One's a bonus baby. I love her to death. But I have four biological kids. Mm-hmm. Of my four biological kids, um, my oldest son, he'll be 19 in April. He has talked to his biological father on the phone, um, but I, I don't think they ever other in person. Okay. He's 19? He's 19. And um, his, he knows where his dad lives or whatever. And I I stay out of that. Right. You know what I'm saying? He was in, when he was in middle school, I almost like had a problem. Like, actually I did have a problem, but he contacted him through social media. He was at school, and my son was in the same school that I was in. And he comes to me, and he's like, he's like, who is this guy? And what's going on? Mm-hmm. And I had to pick up the phone. Like, I need you. Mm-hmm. I need you. Like, this could have been an issue. Like, hey, I'm. Going And we would have had that conversation. You haven't been here in 13 years, and you're going to contact somebody through social media? Mm-hmm. And you're going to say, hey, <clears throat> I'm your daddy. What? But with the communication, you got to have that understanding. And a lot of guys don't have that understanding. No, this one, he had that understanding. Mm-hmm. He had that because I said, whenever you're ready, mm-hmm. whenever you're ready. Oh, yeah, that's right. different. Okay? That's different. Right there, step up Whenever there. you're ready. All right? So because one of the things you. one of the things around. that you that you have said is, you know, a lot of women are they have that independent thing going on. Okay? Um we don't we don't we don't even know. I'm not, we don't even want to go I'm that not, that's, that's I'm not independent. <laughs> I'm interdependent. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I am a, I am an interdependent woman. Right. Um but they they have, you know, I don't need a man. I don't need a man. Well, what do I do? Yeah. Right? I need one. Right. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and with that inter- that independent mindset, like, that pushes, that can push the man away. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not doing that. Right. Okay? Right. You know what? You don't want to be here right now. We're going to be good. Mm-hmm. When you ready, you let me know. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay? Mm-hmm. And if it takes you 13 years then that's a conversation that you got to have with your wife. Because I told you, when you're ready, you let me know. You know what our address is. You know what the phone number is. So why did you have to come to me? Just to move. Okay? Why did you have to contact him through social media and disrupt the life of a child? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's those type of actions that's like, well, I don't want you in my child's life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That type of thing. That's when you get to that point. You right. know? Right. And so, like, I, I 
I totally agree. It's a whole bunch of things that go into mm-hmm. why somebody's not the one. Yeah. It's it's a whole bunch, but you gotta. Everybody has to look at themselves and yeah. check. You know what part am I not right? Yeah. When we say that it's um, um, it's just like rolling down. It's just a, a chain effect where maybe his father wasn't whatever, and his father wasn't whatever, but. As I was talking about earlier, we got to break that cycle or whatever in there. Yeah, not saying that making no excuse for it, but at some point when this kid, he, uh, I think you were just saying, well, the, about the young ones in there, he don't now, he didn't got this girl pregnant or whatever. Now he don't want nothing to do with her or whatever. Did he see that somewhere else? And as you and I talked about, uh, I think we talked about outside of maybe in here, shit, I can't remember. But, uh, you know, the, um, like you were saying, I think one of you was saying shit, I can't even remember, about the nurturing of the woman mm-hmm. and doing that for the man. But sometimes, you, you know, well, man, if a boy, boy what, the, what the hell are you crying for? Mm-hmm. Cut all that crying. Mm-hmm. But it's okay. It is. It's yeah. okay to do that. But when we're trying to be so dang go hard on them, when really they need to know, hey, it's, it's okay. You know, it's okay, man. Look, you know, we can go on and sit them down and let my son know that it's okay. My youngest son was playing in a football game one time. They lost. They, they could have went to state with this game, mm-hmm. or whatever. And he, this is what he told me after the fact. You know, he was good. I can say, son, what's up? It's okay. Blah 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 blah. Soon as his mama hugged him, the floodgates opened. All the way. He said, Dad, I couldn't let it go. He, he just he just let it go. I say, son, it's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, we have to let him know that it, it's okay to do that. It's okay it to is. go in and cry. We mm-hmm. have to, at some point in time, let the man know when these guys come out of out of prison for being locked up. Some of them the second or third time. You're not in your damn kid's life or whatever because you're still trying to be so damn hard. It's okay, man. Let's lighten up. You know, it's it's lighten up. I'm just reading this book. Hard got you. Hard got you. Hard time. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, on on a couple of my little notes that I just do a little Google search and say which race has the most fatherless children. We already know the black race with 57.6 percent are living absent of their biological father. You know, and then another one right here. What percent of African American children are fatherless? It's saying twenty eight percent of African American children do not live with any father representation, and so them are the ones that could be. But now, I wouldn't. Say, he, I mean, he has a choice in there. But at what point is his mind ready for that change? You know, if he's a teenager, he's growing up, he's with that wrong crowd over there. They teach him to be so hard, whatever, and disrespect women. You know, where's that man role model in his life? You know, I've coached Little League football back in the day for about 16 years or whatever. I dealt with a whole lot of kids from the east side that daddy wasn't there. Ours, they daddy, you know, yeah. pretty much, so to speak, you know. South mm-hmm. Oak Cliff. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know. And, you know, but what is there any way possibly I think that that cycle will ever change or break where the, where the black man go on to step up, communicate? And I, I just say this, with, with my ex, with both of my exes, because I've been married twice, I get along with them just fine, uh, especially when it involves my kids. They know that I'm in their life. We've never been on the system. However, if we had to and it's there, then, well, I take that back. I was living on the, on the system at one point because that's what the system is there for to help you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was fired from a job one time. Boom, I went straight to the unemployment office, went straight to the wherever office. I got some stamps. I got whatever, and I'll tell you what I had to do for my family. Yeah, picked up right. a couple of jobs. That's what a man do. That's what yeah. we do. A guy, yeah. a guy will sit back. A guy gonna sit back and say, yeah. "Man, I ain't getting them stamps." Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I ain't, I ain't getting them that. stamps. Getting so they, they're there to help you, you know. Mm-hmm. And shortly after that, then we were off of them. Right. But my and my youngest son. No, I'm taking back my oldest son. Shit, I forget. But my oldest <laughs> son back in the day, uh, we didn't. Uh, uh, we were probably 19 or whatever, some shit like that. I don't remember. But I bought milk. Similac by the fucking case, right. you know, we never was on the system. I was out there working. I was providing, you know, now take now look now. This is from someone that my daddy and you know my dad. Yeah, he lived in Temple, but I was raised 98 percent by my mom. You know, now my mom never made it to any of my sporting events and did whatever because she couldn't take her baby get hit like that. Now, my dad, he taught for couples, you know, and I played from all the way and coming on up there now. Have I really dealt with that? No, I ain't really dealt with that. You know, I haven't, and it's still right there in me or whatever. Maybe I need to just go out and have a big old ass cry one time and say whatever and talk to him. 
Yeah, have I talked to my daddy about that? No, my daddy ain't in his 80s or whatever. And I, I really haven't, you know, but is that an excuse? No. Just go back to communication. You know, communication to talk to him, to find out. I just want to somewhere at some point in time for us to break that cycle where the black man is not involved in the kid's life. I don't give a damn. Whatever it is, if he's living out of town, there's no reason why he should have had to contact his son on social media. Right. He know the address. He know every damn thing, where he's at and everything. If you contact him on social media, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say what kind of move I think that is, but in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm thinking less of it. We we on the podcast. Oh, well, <laughs> let me get that. <laughs> you ain't gonna say I what get, kind of move that is. Yeah, call it what it is. Yeah, you know, it's you know, yeah, yeah, space. Yeah, yeah, right. you know, that's a bitch ass shit. Okay, it is. You know, it's it bitch is. ass shit, and yeah. that just I'm not like that. And I may, you know, some of old school guys, we just that's some passionate shit that I'm passionate about, and I try to break that, and I instill it in my kids. And everything mm-hmm. to try to break that cycle and shit. Get to where you got to get. Every second of my time is valuable. I'm not gonna be that one that's late. The most, you know. the most important thing that we we have is our time. Yeah. True. Yeah. And when you yeah. waste your time, I can have a conversation like this every day. Yeah. Yeah. You know because it's it's not wasteful. Mm-hmm. If one person look at this podcast and see well, hey, you know what? There's something that he can mm-hmm. know about. Mm-hmm. You know. One father, one mother, you know, different shit. They have three, four, five kids. And yeah. Don't know what to do. You know, young mothers. You know, I, yeah. I, my, I, my daughter just had a little young uh, granddaughter, and it's it's taking a village. Right. Yeah. It, it definitely takes a village, and that's why I say we got to get back to really the roots of taking care of one another. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if your son came and broke his window, and I came and told you, I ain't finna get into a fight with you. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we we couldn't do nothing over there with your daddy. No. On our street, we couldn't no. do nothing. And then go back over our street like it's all good. We couldn't yeah. do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you know, and that's that's the thing that we got away from. Right. Well, my kid wouldn't do that. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Was you there? Yeah. So we, you know, we gotta we gotta break, you know, the stuff that we we have social media. Mm-hmm. I think a big thing that that's really governing our kids is is technology. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I, I, I tell people our kids are, are very dumb with this phone. Yeah. If you take this phone from them and ask them oh simple God. stuff, yeah. ask them what's your home phone number. Yeah. Oh, we don't have home phone numbers. Yeah. Well, what's your cell number? Yeah. What's your cell number that you right. carry? Right. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, I gotta think about it. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and I mean, I can go all the way back. Well, what's my what's what's my beacon? Yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll tell you I can give you my beacon. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's your yeah. phone number. Yeah. So you know it, it's, it's so it's like I say we already identified it. It's so many yes, sections why? of it, yeah. mm-hmm. but I think um, as us being my you know sound mind body and soul people, we we have to steady push the issue of hey you know the people that's around us that we connected to right. you know hey let's check yourself yeah. have your homeboy. Yeah, what, kind what's, of what's the best yeah. homeboy and best homegirl? Mm-hmm. Your homeboy ain't the guy that you just gonna go out and let you do foolish stuff. Mm-hmm. Your homegirl, mm-hmm. you know, if your homegirl tell you, don't waste your time. Mm-hmm. He look good, yeah, he look good. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, he look good. Same way, you know, yeah, she look good. Right, look, bro. Yeah, you know that. You know, yeah. you, you, you finna yeah. enter, you finna enter something that that, that you gonna be in for the rest of your life, and don't even look at what y'all did mm-hmm. as far as. The actual doing, right. look mm-hmm. what you produce out of it. Yeah, and then now you brought somebody else in here to suffer mm-hmm. while y'all trying to get it together. Mm-hmm. You know, so I tell people once you have kids, man or woman, you know it, it's not about you no more. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and mm-hmm. when you bring it about the kid, like you say, that's mm-hmm. including emotion. Yeah, pulling emotion out. Yeah. you know, pulling the child support. Child support ain't never been for the kid. You know, I, I I know ladies that get child support, and if you ever got anything from the state, anything, they get their money back off the top. Yeah, mm-hmm. they get their money right off the top. That that check gonna be dwindled down. Yeah. You know, you you might see a hundred dollars of a four hundred dollar check. Yeah. You know, so if like you said, y'all can have the communication, the understanding of, hey, if I put this man on there and I 
had to find some other thing. And I've had a housing assistant give me money for it. Mm-hmm. They're giving it back. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just what they do. They they know how to get their money back. They're like, yeah, sure. You know, but the biggest thing that we we hadn't mentioned is how when they made uh, it okay for for the black man out of the out of the house. Mm-hmm. See, they set the precedent. By doing that, so now that's why you got a lot of women running around independent. And I tell, I, I have a lot of women friends, but I tell them independence is lonely. Mm-hmm. Look, look, look at it. Independence is very lonely. Mm-hmm. Isn't that like I like the way you put it though? I like the way you put it though. What you <laughs> what you said? You need you, man. You want you, man. Yeah. Yeah. You, and, and, you know. Yeah. Got anything on that, Josh? I'm interested. Um, I feel like <laughs> honestly, uh, to break like we were saying to break those cycles, I feel like uh us as people we need to start holding each other accountable like our friends like when you say when you talk about counselors right mm-hmm. um i think your first counselors would typically be your friends you know what i'm saying the people mm-hmm. who listen to you talk the most about your problems and if we all knew like our friends like for instance i knew you had children but and you know i had children <coughs> but i also knew you didn't talk to your kids as often i feel like as a friend it would be my responsibility to be like man you know maybe you should call them talk to them if we all did that more often and like what you were saying like um a woman would be like, no, nah, girl, don't mess around. He bad. He was a good-looking face. And the guys would do the same thing with women. It's, it would be a lot less problems. But we don't really take it upon ourselves to counsel our friends or to talk to our friends and with that mm-hmm. responsible level of energy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and as far as what you were saying about you with your dad mm-hmm. and you healing that, you know what I'm saying? Even though you haven't spoken to your father about that, right. I feel like you went forward and you did heal yourself in a way because mm-hmm. you took it upon yourself not to allow that to pass on to another generation. Exactly. You know what I'm yes. saying? So yes. you yes. did deal with it. <coughs> yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so in, exactly. a, in, a, in a sense, that's just you taking your ass out there in the back somewhere, in the yeah. shed back there in the yeah. backyard and yeah. just crying. And just crying. Yeah. 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 Just, just let, let, let it flow. Let that shit go. Just yeah. let it flow yeah. and... Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, come, yeah. and when you come out, punch the door. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Get your chin and, yeah. and just yeah. keep, yeah. On, keep yeah. on going. Right. I think, okay. like, too, though, the most important thing was that you didn't allow yourself, and a lot of people do it. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? You didn't allow yourself to become a victim. Right. You right. saw the problem and you mm-hmm. stepped to it. Oh, the yeah. man is supposed to do yeah. the problem solver. Right. So you saw that and you grew from it as opposed to being like, this is what I didn't have. Right. And in a lot of instances, when you look at that as far as you not having that, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, then another generation goes missing because you're so self-centered. You didn't allow mm-hmm. that to externalize. Right. Like You know what I'm saying? Right. But you did, though. Right. right. So it's like you healed that. And right. it's like we really just so into, like, this victim mentality. Well, right. he did me wrong and right. she did me wrong. And it's like the children are really the ones that suffer from right. that victim right. mentality. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I, I like where you put all that shit. That was, <laughs> oh, give me a dab of that shit. I like that. I was gonna never looked at it like that. Yeah, for real, you know, that's what healing takes place, you know, though. And then yeah. look at it as when you was talking about the friend. So, your friend over here that's supposed to be your dog, or whatever. Come on, man. Let's go and go down here and roll this block. Right. Let's go and go down here and hit this bottle. They never once asked you, like, how your children are. Right. Is you that know? your friend? In other words, where I'm going with that, you know, exactly. trying to get you to do something. Man, you know, let's go in there and fuck that bitch. You know, and I'm going to tell you, to this day and this point in time, I do not call women bitches. No, I'm I saying do that. Not I don't either. do that, you know. And I don't I don't go around calling them a, a, a nigga. I just don't because I just, it's me, mm-hmm. you know. But a lot of shit, believe it or not, because times have changed so much, I've learned shit from TV back in the day when the woman come in and the guy was holding a chair for him. See, my dad didn't teach me that. You know, he was younger, different time, a different age, age, so he was busy working and doing that or doing whatever else he was doing, whatever, some different family, whatever. But I learned so much. But now, a lot of that's been changed on TV now. You don't hardly see that. And plus, now everybody's on TikTok, mm-hmm. Twitter, whatever, yeah, and it's a lot of whatever. Gone. We don't even talk about that TV. So, no, but so it's, it's yeah, some man. shows that Same. do show it, though. I do? Like, everybody hate Chris. Like, you don't know if you pay attention to that. His that, father would be working several well, jobs see, on gotta, the property, all that. You got to look at the era in which everybody hates yeah, Chris. Yeah, that's another it's thing. In, yep. Okay? The, the, the era in which everybody hates business. Chris is in. Like, that 90s era going forward. Mm-hmm. Right. We opening doors by ourselves. Right. Okay? True. Yeah. We. But that's also when the whole little thing about getting the man out of the household kicked in, though, like he was saying. Like that's that era. That was before that really was like infiltrated. 
So, you know so, I mean? so if you go back to like uh, the Jeffersons, the seventies, mm-hmm. right. yeah, like, all those, you know, yeah. uh, what's the sign of good times? Mm-hmm. Right, man, poverty. Yeah, you know, and yeah. and and one thing we got to look at is that poverty is a direct correlation with sin. Mm-hmm. It's a direct. It, it's 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 so direct <coughs> because you, if I oppress you so much, mm-hmm. you know. You got people that, you got people, you know, I, like I said, I work with the prison system. Right. And, I, and, and I talk to them guys, man, because I'm, I'm doing time just like this. I'm just going yeah. home at the yeah. point. Yeah. 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 So I sit down, I talk to them. You know, I said, man, what they just do right there, man? He said, man, I ain't going to lie, bro. He said, Jack, the first time I did it, when I was sitting there getting you the man, I felt free. Mm-hmm. He said, even though my dad, like what you were saying, right. wasn't in the house. Dad was providing for us. Mm-hmm. My dad would still have a host with us. If mama told us to do something, if we didn't do it and he go and get dad, we wake up getting hurt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, yeah. he said, but even though my dad wasn't there, I couldn't provide, man. I lost my job. Right. He said, and I ain't going to say they took my job. Mm-hmm. I messed up. Right. And he said, but it was the lack of the training. You know, he said, and I, I didn't. I knew I didn't have the proper training, but as a man, I didn't ask. Yeah. I didn't say, and so it came back and bit me. Yeah. Right. And he said, and then when I saw I couldn't provide my homeboy, like we said, his mm-hmm. friend, right. say, man, I'm finna hit this lick. Right. Yeah. And he yeah. like, say, man, I'm sitting there watching my old lady. You know, she scrambling up, pulling out beans. She, you know, hey, baby, go get a pack of weenies. I'm going to the store right. to right. get a pack of weenies mm-hmm. for her to put in some beans. Right. To feed my kids. He said, and I just said, man, I'm just going to hit this street. I'll be back. So I went to the store, bought the weenies back, but also I jumped in that car. Right. And, that's, and after that last, that's my last ride. Right. And my next ride was down here where I'm at now. Right. And I'm going to be here for 22 years. Right. right. You know, but, you know, and, and, and so crime is a, I mean, poverty is a direct correlation to, to you know, crime. Mm-hmm. You know, because if, if, if I'm not giving you an opportunity, people get, don't nobody give them nothing. Mm-hmm. You got to understand, this country has taken everything. Yeah. Ain't no, when I hear people yeah. talk about you need to pull your own bootstraps up, that ain't what this country was built on was nobody no. pulling their bootstraps mm-hmm. up. Let's get this. You know, mm-hmm. well, well, we're going into something else. But yeah, yeah. It's yeah. still uh, all in the same. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's, wide it's yeah. just a big old wide topic. And at the end of the day, you know, we just got to, you know, make better decisions and, you yeah. know, as far as, you know, our mates and who our friends are, mm-hmm. and, you know, I need somebody that's going to check me. I ain't, right. I ain't never want nobody to just go along with me. Exactly. My, my friends, when I was young, I tell my son, my friends, when I was young, I didn't hang out with 19-year-olds. Mm-hmm. When I was 16, I didn't hang out with 16-year-olds. Mm-hmm. I knew they didn't know shit because I didn't know Because I didn't exactly. know nothing. <laughs> I didn't know. So yeah. I know you don't know. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I didn't hang out with, yeah. I hang out with the old people. Yeah. Like, my, my uncles and aunties, they my uncles and aunties, they more like my sisters and brothers. Mm-hmm. Right. But my great aunts, yeah. my great uncles, right. say, man, them, them, yeah. them, them where it was at. Right. And I hate that my kids don't get that mm-hmm. kind of, yeah. that kind of. Mm-hmm. So much knowledge mm-hmm. lost. Because mm-hmm. that's a lot of knowledge it lost. It is, man. Remedies, you know? all type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. everything. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. uh, just not to have the education level to know that, hey, this is what you need to do to get yourself out of that situation. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that happened to you. You was touched by our uncle. You was this, you was that. But this is how you fight through that. Mm-hmm. You you let him carry that. Mm-hmm. You let him carry that, and you go on with your life and be great. Yeah. You know, and, and when we learn to, like you say, you healed yourself and just mm-hmm. didn't know it yeah. because yeah. You, you broke the cycle. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, me, you know, my dad not being in my life, my stepdad came out, so 10 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I was 10 years old when I left and went to Germany. So I spent seven years in Germany. When I came back to Temple for the last year. I, w- I went to Milwaukee first. Mm-hmm. I saw that shit they had going on in Milwaukee. I said, no, I'm going to Granny's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I know at Granny's it's going to be all the same, but right. what I was seeing in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, you know, I just like, yeah, let me go on back to Little Temple. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I can appreciate Temple, Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah. I just didn't know that many black people was in Milwaukee. Right. And up just in that Midwest. But then when you think about Gary, Indiana, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. where Michael Jackson them from, mm-hmm. you know? It's a lot of black folks up in there. Yeah. And uh, so I went on back down to Temple. I did one year down there at Temple High School, graduated, wow. and went on. But in my life, I knew I wanted to be have a family. Right. I, I knew I wanted to have a family because I, that's what I saw. My mm-hmm. grandmother, Miss Ducey, that's mm-hmm. my grandmother. Her boo is my grandfather. Mm-hmm. I, that's what I saw was family. Right. And, and a lot of people talk about all the dysfunction in family. Mm-hmm. Life is dysfunctional. Yeah. So how That's are we going to be better than life? We yeah. only can aspire to be better than life because it's all dysfunctional. Yeah. But we got to just weed our way through there and try to guide the, the next generation through there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I have just uh, one or two more little topics. One, not topics, one little, my little survey. And it's all tied in there together. And it's uh, what race has the most single moms but it's we already know mm-hmm. but like mm-hmm. it gave me a percent right. google with 64 percent now uh, you know when you look at that and like you like that's that's a lot you know the black race you know and 64 percent you know single moms you know and so i mean i don't know if we ever will maybe we'll get a chance to where we can kind of break that but it also talks about you know role models you know there's some of the kids now today's need role models, and then who are those role models? I mean, so I I used to coach, you know, twelve and fourteen year basketball, and I asked my my players all the time. I say I asked them, I say, who are your role models? Mm-hmm. And I I had to name all the top ones that I had. Right. I heard LeBron James. Yeah. I heard Kevin Durant. I heard Shaq. And I say who. Are your close ones? Who you know? Mm-hmm. You know, you know when you get sick, you get hurt, you get the chick, you gotta get picked up. Say who your close ones? And they say to me, I say Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. And then they tell me about my mom. I say, as a matter of fact, who takes you to my partner's barber shop and get your hair cut every week? Mm-hmm. Who takes you to your track meet? Who takes you to the bar? I say, young man, that is your role model. Right. I say your role model is not the person. I say, I like Magic, I like Michael, I like all of them. I like you, Joe Green, I mm-hmm. like all of them. Right. But them was not my role model. Right. Those people don't even know you. Mm-hmm. I had to let them know that a role model is not somebody that's a figure that's on TV. That's mm-hmm. entertainment. Mm-hmm. A role model is a life person that you can touch. You can't mm-hmm. touch those people. Mm-hmm. And one of the little guys, he's real smart. You know, you know, he just signed and got out of college. And he said, you know, Coach Jackson, he said, you know, I saw my grandfather, and my grandfather was a fine man, mm-hmm. you know, and how he did everything for me. And if I was down, I had no job, and he had no job, he had to pay the bills. Right. You know, and I wasn't so picky on him. I say, well, you guys know each other. You know, we, 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 we handsome. Right. I said, yeah. we're not pretty. No, we're not pretty. I said, we're not pretty. Not so pretty. You know, he said, change the word. You know, I say, let's, you know, but it's just the kids, like you say, nobody is – has told them that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I had one kid that said that, uh, well, my mom uh, says different. Well, uh, my, Michael Jordan can be my role model because I can be wanting to be like him. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. I, I didn't go on that because I'm not into telling this kid that your mom that is your wrong. Mom exactly. Wrong. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm going to let that kid and their mom have to deal with that, but those other 14, 12 to 14 kids, right. I know I got them too. Right. Because they come back the next day, and they, even their parents came back like, uh, they say, I like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And, and so it's just, anybody could be a role model to mm-hmm. a kid now, especially yeah. with the percentage of what you just read. Right, right. It's yes. just taking the time to say, hey, I'm not raising no voice at you. I'm not disrespecting mm-hmm. you. I'm just saying, hey, you know, if I saw your son jumping, hey, little man, don't get that. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. But see, one of, one of the things that, so my daughter, she lives in a neighborhood that's black. And they have a lot of the kids that go to the middle school and, you know, go for, she used to be a dance teacher, you know, she had her baby, but she subbed at the, the middle school. And so her living in that neighborhood, um, we've had the conversation a lot about, you know, the village life, mm-hmm. you know, and 
like you said, we've gotten away from the word empowerment. Um, for me, like working in the school system, I tell <laughs> okay. I don't like kids. I don't right. like how you teach, but you don't like kids. I'm like, you know what? I don't like y'all because y'all are like evil things. Okay, <laughs> but I love you, which right. is what has me coming back every day. And that love will have me in Walmart, and I see you acting up, mm-hmm. and right. I look around the corner. Right. Okay, and I, where your mama at? Right. Go and find your mama before you get in trouble in this grocery store. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or do you want me Mm -hmm. to go, you know, because I I get a lot of kids, they walk in with their parents, we make eye contact. Right. Okay? And I'm going to give you a little head nod because I know you don't want me to introduce you to to your mama right right now. Right, right, right. right, You worried about what I'm going to say, but I got you. You see what I'm saying? And it's that right there, like, I could see them out in the community, and they were like, oh, there's Miss Kim. Right. All right, so let me do what it is that I need to do, mm-hmm. you know, but they'll see somebody else, and why are your hands in your pocket? You look a lot better. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yes, that is. right there, the, the men, there's a lot of men in this community um, that grew up in Killeen, mm-hmm. and the, the kids around here, they have a lot of I personally need to see them out a little bit more. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I need to see them out a little bit more. You know what? Your kid don't go to XYZ Middle School, but you could put your name on the back of the door yeah, and you yeah. could show up. Yeah. You don't have to have a kid there mm-hmm. in order to volunteer and mm-hmm. show up. That's the definition. Okay. Of Yes, what you exactly. Doing, right. What you're doing exactly. and what you just said is right. the definition yes. of just because you don't have a kid, don't turn on every kid. Right. Right. Because and there was a lot of people yes. that didn't have kids where we come from. Right. Right. And they still had some issues. We right. still, Mr. Marshall didn't like nobody. He sure did. <laughs> Mr. Marshall would pull a shotgun on a kid. <laughs> so we knew when we went to that yep. show, yep. you go in there and get what you can pay for. Yes. And that's yeah. it, because mm-hmm. Mr. Marshall going to pull a shotgun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So even though that's harsh, right. but some places, I mean, we right there in Crestview, yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. the place that you got to be harsh, yeah. because mm-hmm. the kids yeah. are harsh and living right. in a harsh right. environment. Right. Right. They don't understand, right. uh, young man, stop. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who are you talking to? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, but they understand that shotgun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's a universal <laughs> language. Second, right. 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 Yeah. Everybody get that. Yeah. 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 Talking about I, I was yeah. a crackhead broke in. Right. Yeah, but he right. understood that that racking of that shotgun. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, we have probably got like another ten minutes or something like that. But just to touch on a couple of things, uh, when you talk about the kids seeing you and you can kind of give them that little heads up and that little nod, you know, that little nod or whatever, I can so much relate to that because you know from coaching the little league football, I've had this kid. Now this kid is a giant, and it just it just blew me away when he had a a twenty. He, this kid was probably maybe thirty at this time. And when he saw me, he said, hey, what's up, coach? But he, he put his beard that he had uh-huh. behind yeah. his back. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, and, and, and yeah. see that. So, you know, you know, when we're talking about, you know, why aren't more black fathers involved in their kids' life, we already said that's such a wide topic. I mean, we can sit here probably for hours and talk mm-hmm. about yeah. that. Days, probably. You know, yeah. yeah, and, you know, it's still <laughs> not. But we just wrote it down. We, right, you know, and you we've know. talked about from emotionals, you know, the, and just so many different things, respect, communication, you know, and we just have to, and I just like to see that cycle broken to where, because, you know, I'm, I'm big on that right there, you know, and somewhere trying to reach that kid, even from role models. And I had that in my notes, and we had already mentioned about role models and stuff. You know, I had some of the notes, and some of the notes that I researched, we already covered. That's why I didn't even really kind of read much of them, right, because right. they just comes up like that, you know. And then uh, a lot of us, I felt as though we were speaking kind of with personal things. I never looked at it the way you just told me, like that about me and my dad's situation, mm-hmm. whatever, you know. And uh, you know, it just some point that I want to try to on this podcast and on different other sessions to cover topics that's not really talked about that much, and just sit down and we just have a discussion about it, you know. And, you know, we, we and hopefully at some point the respect and the 
taking care of the elderly and all that. Because kind of one, cause one day, if you live long enough, you will become an elderly yeah, person. Yeah, elderly. Yeah. You know, and and that's why that's how I look at it. you. Yeah. You sowing right. what you yeah. want back. Right. That's so, what you're doing. So. Right. What I like to kind of do right before we get ready to close it out is just give everybody a chance to just speak whatever it is you want to speak about before we get ready to close this thing up out here. And as always, ladies first. So whatever's on your mind, just let them know. <laughs> y'all listen to this right now because she's going to let y'all know what's going on. <laughs> okay. Um, well, first off, I don't know if I gave you guys enough time to say hi to me on the podcast, but as always, I thank you, thank you, thank you for giving me the opportunity to have a voice um, and say what's on my heart about um, to the public. As far as the, no. the man, the baby, daddy, no. that's, no. it, that's it. That's okay. it. That's it. Okay. Okay. All right. Ready that's to go it. Up. You can go on and just say whatever it is. Uh, uh, as the, uh, the attorney, get up there. Your closing <laughs> arguments will be. So let's give any kind of a closing thing and whatever it is you want to share that we may not have covered that you want to go ahead and say to the world. Just let them have it. Well, I'm gonna appreciate you having me down. Right. You know, uh, one thing about it, we got to support. Thing that y'all have going on is the tree, and uh, you know, we know that this relationship is uh, definitely in uh, this state of family heart share is something because I, I believe in you know the kids, right. the kids yes. is definitely right. my future, right? You know, right, because I plan to be here a while, I don't right. know about everybody else, I'm gonna go on claim that, yes, but I uh, I appreciate you, yeah, uh, nice platform, uh, yes. On fire, right, you know, right, right, right. You know, right. So, right. but I do look forward to one on one and yeah, get get back with this group or any other group. You know, we, we yeah. right. So. And I'm I'm gonna tell you, you and I, you know, we we didn't come from the same town in there, so we definitely gonna have some one on ones. Yeah. But I don't mean to teach you how to play dominoes. Oh, like here we go. We we, don't I, I, no. get on that <laughs> we, we, we can actually play dominoes on him now. No, no, no. <laughs> we don't go there. We don't go there. But look it up. It just, look it up. It's just a lot of brotherly love, you know, and stuff like that. So, (laughs) you guys, uh, I'm going to have Josh to say something, but then after that, you know, uh, I'm going to give out something. But, guys, if you have anything else that you want to just share with them, then you can go ahead and do that. So, we're going to let Josh say what it may be on his mind, or Josh, just anything, whether it be about the topic or just whatever else you want to share. So, just go ahead and share. The mic is yours. Definitely. Um, I just want to say it's definitely an honor to be on here with you guys. You know what I'm saying? It's always a, a healthy place to discuss, you know what I'm saying, whatever's on our mind, and I definitely appreciate that. And I also want to share that, you know, when it comes to our children, it's our responsibilities to make sure that they have what they need, but also to make sure that they don't live through the same mistakes that we right. experienced. Right. And, and I understand that they're going to have their own mistakes that's new that we never experienced, but through our wisdom and experience is our responsibility to help them through those things so that they therefore can go through and help the next generation and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And it's just something that I feel like we don't think about because we just, in this society we live in today is everything's about self and being Mm self-centered. And we have to look at our children with a certain aspect as to where they are us. So it's, it, it's just to the point as to where like we gotta see that sometimes it's past our time and we have to help them shine because it's their time, you know. Yeah. And that's that's pretty much that's all, man. Just spreading the love. Yeah, that's Anything else you kind of like to add on? Well, I would like to add group? add on to that. Um, I'm I'm big on communication. I'm I'm a communication person. So when it when it deals with men, deals with women, um, and learning how to communicate with one another. Just be willing to listen and understand versus listen and speak. If you take the time to understand what that other person is saying to you and process that information and then respond, then you'll get a lot more out of it. Facts. You good? You good? That's good. And the communication. communication and that's something that I think if you kind of if you start dating so often you can kind of just 
and I've said this on one of the other podcasts, you see the hole, jump in the hole, and you boom, 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 and you have never really talked about anything. You haven't had any type of communication about anything, you know, which way this is going, a long life deals, whatever, you know. Right. So, but uh, uh, then I, I thought of this topic, didn't try to accomplish and, 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 I mean, solve anything, but just wanted to come out and let the world know what's going on and to cover some things and cover this topic. And, you know, we'll be back on, maybe be a part two to it, because we can go on for days and forever about it. But at some point, sometime, we got to try to break that cycle and uh, let the black man, you know, be involved in the kid's life. And he has to step up. And if the resources are there, quit being a little bitch and go ask for the help, mm-hmm. right. you know. But now sometimes you might say, uh, I don't want that. If there's a white counselor, man, that motherfucker can't relate to me. You know, so we need somebody like us. I believe representation. Yeah. I think you said that earlier. Yeah. So, but the, to to be the man, you have to go on and man up to get on out there to see that and yeah, accomplish it. Absolutely. You know, and and know that the resources there are for us. And that's my little alarm going off right there, letting me know that it's about time to get on up out of this thing. Guys, I can't tell y'all enough. I appreciate you guys coming out. You know, it's a, it's just a lot of love and support. You know, the ladies, I can't say it enough. It's so hard to get the ladies to come on the show. And I reached out to you. You enjoyed the topic. You was ready to go on and flow with it. You know, I appreciate you for that to the fullest. So thank you. Josh already knew that I, he's my go-to guy because I had another guy that counseled on me, even though he knew about it like a month ahead of time. I text Josh for probably a, a few days' notice. Mm-hmm. He's like, boom, I'm there at the same location. I sent it to him. Yeah, boom, got it. That right there, love, appreciate that, you know. And I already said before, we're going to have some more one-on-ones later yeah. on at, su- at a later date and such. And my man, Big Jack, come all the way down from Dallas. Oh, I mean, what? From Dallas. Yeah, you know, man. through the traffic <laughs> on 35. Bro, don't That's talk love. About, you know, That's don't love. Don't That's love. That's lots of love right there. So, yeah. Don't take off about Waco yeah. yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. so that right there, I mean, that's love is cool. I reached out to him, asked him to come on. He said, bet, we'll go. I, I'm there. He texted me. He was here yesterday. So, guys, I just, I mean, I love, appreciate, support. And for anyone out there watching, if you have any uh, questions for the guests, you know, leave them in the comments. You have another hot topic, something you'd like to see us discuss, you have uh, hit me up in the comments. You have a question for Brandon, hit me up in the comments. Don't be texting me personally, asking me about who is that. <laughs> Some of them that done that. I'm just putting that out there. But uh, anyway, Brandy got her fan club. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, we just closing it all out now. Why aren't more black fathers involved in their kids' life? Topics can go on for days, weeks, and hours. I figure we touch some key points and key things, some personal notes up in there, and uh, that's all we got for you out there, world. This is your boy Paul Wizzo. I'll let you boy. And the camera is still hot until they come out. So if y'all don't do anything crazy and throw up some sides or whatever, yeah. you do what you do. <laughs> well, because this is going to be uploaded to the internet just like that. Oh, nah, we ain't there. We, good. But we, we got some good topics, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We yeah. We got some good topics. Yeah. I, I want to talk about one later on uh, yeah. about just some black young ladies in America. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. 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 and all yeah. that, so yeah. it's, can, it's, yeah. it's deep. Yeah, we can cut that. And, you know, they just had a big bus up in Dallas, up at the Anatole Hotel. Mm. And these are 46 professionals. Yeah.